Hello and welcome to Modkit Mayhem. So this week I thought we'd build a aircraft and paint it with Humbrol paints. And basically this video is about that, building the fairy filmer made by Mr. Hobby Kit Craft using the old, old school Humbrol paints that you still can buy, but people seem to have gone more towards acrylics now because they're easier to use and a little bit less toxic. Having said that, I was quite interested to see kind of for the nostalgic reasons how I'd be able to handle using the old enamel paints again and on the most part it was quite good fun but there are vices like with everything that you have to be aware of when using these paints. The pros and cons are there as usual but it, it, it seemed to go okay and it made for an interesting build. The kit's not a very expensive kit and would make a good sort of platform for just trying out these paints and uh, seeing what kind of you know how they kind of work. I thought I'd just build up the most basic version of this, not add anything particularly extra. As with every kit like this, you start off with two halves either side of the aircraft, the fuselage, and get rid of any pin marks or uh, flash. The kit has plenty of that because it's a cheap kit. Start putting the cockpit together. It's got basic seats and um, it's quite bizarre the, the actual flight stick is, is very, very basic, yet it's quite detailed on the instructions. <laughs> I don't know where that's come from. But it, it went together fine. And I kind of just, yeah, pressed on with all the other bits and bobs and put the wings together. And then when it came to painting inside the actual cockpit, I just went with a really basic matte black. Now, these paints haven't been opened in at least, I'd say, maybe 20 years. So they're really, really old. And some haven't even been used. They're absolutely brand new. They're quite stodgy when you open them up. And if you need opening the tin lid, it's quite tricky because it's welded on. And then you have to give it, even after a good shake, a really good stir with some cocktail sticks or, in my case, barbecue sticks. And after a while, after a good, you know, 10, 15 minutes stirring it and trying to get it to sort of a smooth consistency, there's no lumps left in there. You can actually start painting with it. And to be fair, actually, the good thing about Humbrol paint is it paints straight on much better than acrylics you know you don't have to undercoat it you just literally paint on where you, you need it to be and that does save a bit of time some degrees but in other ways you'll see later it's not the best thing my plan was to just literally paint the cockpit black because there was no point it's so basic it's no point spending much more time or putting any colors into it you're going to hardly notice it anyway um, especially at 172 so i just used the black to paint the inside of the cockpit and also the propeller Once I was done, I could glue the halves together and that went together fine. You know, there's no issues there. It all fitted a little bit of warping, but that was again to expected. Cut out some of the details, glued on the, the exhaust and then the kit fitted together quite well, considering it also glued on the gun sight. And then put together the wings. If you, if you cut the wings properly, they fit on pretty well, to be fair. You have to kind of make sure the bottom's attached first. Once that's dry, then glue the top half of the wings to the fuselage and just press them in slightly so it closes the gap up between the, the fuselage and the actual wing. And that, that was fine, didn't need to do any filling at all on that. And then wheels, propeller in, all fitted together perfectly fine. And then the landing arrestor hook through that, that just slotted in. I painted the inside of the wing light silver because the actual inside of the wing's white with plastic so it's taken forever to paint inside there and it just made sense to paint the inside of the light silver. So it worked quite well that. So there it is, it's pretty much put together. It's kind of time for the main parts of the painting. I started with the green inside the wheel at a base. I didn't have a proper green for this, so I just went for the closest green I could find that was kind of that matched the color it should be. Then using gunmetal, I painted the undercarriage legs. A little bit tricky because I've kind of assembled it, but fine. And then into the major, major part, which is the upper surface of grey. Now I could have painted the undersurface, but this time I thought I'd go with painting the, 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 the top surfaces and the main areas. This is a first coat. Found that I needed to do, you know, a couple of passes. So I think I did three coats in the end. Could just give it a good covering. 
Hunger paint goes on really well compared to acrylic. You've got a little bit more time to just make sure it's even. And the thing is as well, if you get a, a, a kind of flat brush like I'm using here, it's a lot, lot easier to get good coverage. Not quite airbrush, but you know, good enough for, for um, painting. And see, I'm going on to the second coat and instantly you can see there how much a better coverage there is. So by the third coat, you know, you're getting a really, really good, nice, even coat across the whole of the um, aircraft. In the sort of smaller areas, you'll have to use a smaller brush. You can't use the flat flat brush, but on anywhere that's flat and open, you know, you can you can get a much better covering with that big brush. The greys actually went really well on onto the they, you know once I had kind of stirred them up and got them back to sort of health. <laughs> they they did you know they did the job that they were supposed to do, which was great. The only problems I had were with the lighter colours. Now the trickiest part on this whole aircraft is the actual canopy. <laughs> It's, it's got a lot of pains and a lot of struts, so you got to take your time on this. And um, again, you'll do, I think I did two coats on the actual canopy. Humbrol paint goes on really well, but even on the canopy, it smears a little bit and you, see a, you can see through it. So you just got to sort of take your time and, and just work your way over this one. This probably actually took the longest part of the whole aircraft in terms of painting. And if you do make a mistake, I found a good way of if you instantly get one of your um, cocktail sticks or the barbecue stick and just scrape off the paint where you've gone slightly over and it, it will come off. You can you can get it back to the original clear plastic within the first sort of five minutes. You'll, you'll, you can you can recover where you've just gone over the bars. So that's that's a good time saver. Right onto the bottom and it's a lighter grey and the same, no issues after I'd stirred it up properly, it was, it was fine. It was slightly more opaque. I had to do three coats on the, the bottom because of the lighter grey, but still again, it, you know, it worked fine. Now the main thing to remember, and, and it's kind of why I'm a week behind with this video, it took so long to dry. I mean, it was quite relaxing in one sense because it forced you to slow down. You had to wait for the paint to dry, otherwise you'd just ruin it. It'd be so easy to put a thumbprint or, or just smear it. So, you know, you have to give it a good overnight drying. And that put my schedule way back and, and it was half term as well. So we had our, um, our boy with us, so we had to do things with him. In one sense, I needed a break, so it was good, but I would, you know, I would like to have got a video every week, but the first week I couldn't. And so that's why I'm doing it this week. And, and mostly it was just drying time on the paint. You know, you can't rush it. And I think that's why maybe hobbing was quite relaxing when you were, when they were using enamels back in the day, because you, you don't have the quick drying time of acrylic, which is much, much faster. With Humbrol, you haven't got that luxury. You just got to let it dry and there's nothing you can do about it. Move on to another project or something so you can get other things done. It dictates the speed of the build. Onto the wheels, painted them black. And then the exciting part, the camouflage. I was quite looking forward to this. To be fair, the instructions were really good on this kit in terms of the the layout of where you, you paint the camo. So um, that wasn't a problem. And again, I didn't have the exact British green, so I used the color that was the closest I had to it and it worked fine. I just freehanded it. I didn't mark out like I did with the Harrier. The instructions were that good that I could, you know, just mark it out with a brush and then fill in the gaps. Again, just take your time, just think it out the process before you do it and uh, don't rush ahead. Make sure you kind of roughly know where you're going to be painting and, uh, and you can't go wrong really. That's the one thing about, as well with Humbrols and enamel paints, they seem to sort of self-level. Whereas you don't, they're not, acrylics are not forgiving as much on that sense, especially with hand painting. Now going back to the lighter colours, the yellow and the white really were hard work. And I think the yellow was actually ruined. And no matter what I did, I, you know, my stirring or getting it back to this thing, it wasn't going to paint properly. So I just did the best I could with it and tried to get as much of an even coat as I could. If it was a new tin of yellow paint, I'd probably been fine. But again, 20 plus years tin of paint, it's going to be hit and miss. The whites as were the same as well. They, were, they, they didn't go on as well. And that's why I ended up painting the nose cone um, a darker white because it, it, it looked better than the original white. And once I'd finished the canopy, then I used some white glue or PVA to glue it on. Um, I found that's much better than using super glue. push it down into position it fits really well and then tidy up with some gray around any edges where you kind of where the black's gone over and same for the yellow once the yellow had dried you know quite often between colors there'd be you know at least 12 hours so it that shows you how long it's to paint this aircraft <laughs> 
uh, once I'd got all the paint to a point where I was kind of happy where you know it was it was good enough to go I varnished with some clear where I was just the transfers were going to go and that stops the process of silvering well supposed to anyway but again because this is a budget kit the transfers aren't the best and even then I still got some silvering now you don't have to do this if you haven't got it don't worry about it also I just remembered to paint some red and I only had a gloss red within these enamels so I used that for the uh, machine gun port area and then once that was done cut out the transfers always start with the big roundels just to get a feel of how the transfers work you know for this this kind of brand they're okay you know to a certain degree <laughs> I just took a little bit of water, smeared it over the top so before the transfer went down. Put the transfer down on that, it gives you a little bit of leeway in sort of manoeuvring it to where it's to its right position. And then dab it with some tissue to dry and uh, yeah, and, and, and go with that. I put a little bit of um, transfer softener on there, which I had from Vallejo, um, but it really didn't do a lot. I mean, it helped a little bit. Now the first thing that went wrong was the Royal Navy stickers. They, they just crumbled to pieces and there was no way I could save them. They literally just fell apart so to leave them off this aircraft. But the roundels were fine so I just got them in. And it's got the bit like Airfix have done. The, I'm not entirely sure why they do it but the red dot is separate which makes it a little bit fiddly so just use a brush to guide that into place. The next part was... <laughs> I almost gave up, but I thought I, I really wanted to get the aircraft code markings on there. So it broke into, I think it was three or four pieces, and I had to just take my time and maneuver them into position and try and get them back together again, because it would have looked a bit odd without them. It was a shame, and there's not much I can do about it. One side worked fine, but the other side broke to pieces. And I'm not sure is whether this, I'd used warm water and cold water, because the water had cooled down on that last one. So when I changed it to warm water again, the, the other side seemed to work better. So try that. Maybe that'll work better for you. Again, maneuver into position with a brush and uh, get it to where you're happy with it and then just dab some tissue on. Now the under side ones, they started cracking as well, but luckily I found if you slide them on with the, uh, the direction that the, they're kind of breaking apart, then you can get it back onto the aircraft without it breaking too much to bits. After that, I used some varnish to cover it and I put a little bit of filter on there just to kind of get bring up the panel lines. You don't have to do that, you could call it finished after you put transfers on, but uh, I, I wanted to just add a little bit extra to it. And uh, it brought it out really good, so I'm really chuffed with that. For a little kit, it went together quite well, considering it looks all right. It's, it's an interesting aircraft, I've never built one of these before. At the end of the day, it's quite a basic kit, but using the Humbrol paints added to the challenge. And, and if you think about doing it, do it. It's, it's like the old school days where you used to use these paints and the smell brings back that nostalgia that you got when you, uh, you had to open the tin and then stir it and, uh, and use them. But yeah, it was good fun. And I hope you enjoyed the video. It was something different. If you've got some humble tins, give it a go. Find a little kit and just take your time because you have to. <laughs> you don't get a choice. You've got to sit there and wait for it to dry. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Next week, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. And then I'll go back to another kit after that. I think it might be the Apache that you saw in the background. I've got to paint that. I think I'll do that with acrylic. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe below if you can. That'd be great. And uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Cheers. Ta-ra. Bye.